Hi, this is Michael Lamini, and I want to introduce the KTOB technique for biceps tenodesis, which is a knotless all arthroscopic intraarticular tenodesis of the biceps. These are my disclosures. Biceps tenodesis can be done open or arthroscopic using a multitude of fixation methods, and this can be done at multiple sites, including the subpectoral area, the bicipital groove, the conjoint tendon, or at the articular margin. Despite these choices, a review of over 1,500 cases showed no difference in clinical outcomes between sites and a low risk of failure regardless of site. These methods likely differ the most in their disadvantages. In the subpectoral area, there is a 3 to 8 times greater risk of nerve injury, and there is a 4 times greater risk of infection. In this area, there is a greater risk of fracture given that it's a high stress diaphyseal bone, and this is worse if the hole is larger in diameter. Arthroscopic fixation in the groove often overtensions the biceps on average by 2.2 centimeters, and intraarticular fixation often requires exteriorizing the tendon to whip stitch it. And a clinical study shows that interference screws actually have a higher failure rate than suture anchors. As a result of many of these issues, I now use the KTOB technique, which is a knotless, all arthroscopic intraarticular tenodesis of the biceps done at the top of the groove using a knotless anchor. It's efficient, and because it's arthroscopic, has a lower risk of infection and lower risk of nerve injury. There is no exposure of the bicipital groove, which can be bloody arthroscopically. There is no known risk of fracture with anchors in this area, and this is the same location that an anchor goes for an upper subscapularis repair. Very importantly, there is no difference in bicipital groove pain when comparing a subpectoral to a proximal tenodesis at about 10% each, and this technique eliminates motion within the groove. There is no possibility of overtensioning the biceps, and you can secure it at the anatomic length, or you can secure it slightly off tension by penetrating closer to the labrum. And in a clinical series, there was a 0 out of 59 clinical failure rate with 97% satisfaction. This technique is facilitated by using an uncoupled eyelet and screw. If you create a bone socket using a punch, you never have a direct view of that socket. Using the uncoupled eyelet, the sutures can be used as a path to guide you back down to the bone socket to facilitate screw insertion. This is the right shoulder in the lateral position viewed from posterior. We penetrate the biceps using this suturing device called the slingshot. It allows you to hold a fairly good length of suture within the device itself to leave a longer tail to retrieve once it's deployed. Again, this is the middle of the suture, which is then retrieved through the anterior portal, and the sutures are then luggage tagged onto themselves around the biceps. I take one of the free limbs and penetrate the tendon again for an additional point of fixation. I typically try to place this more distal to the, than the previous uh, point of fixation, and I will go around the tendon in the opposite direction to loop the other half of the tendon with the suture. The tendon is then cut above the sutures, and you can see here that we have very good fixation on the tendon. After debriding the stump of the biceps remaining on the labrum, the sutures are loaded into the self-punching eyelet, which is then directed towards the apex of the bicipital groove as far lateral as reasonably possible. This requires a more vertical and more medial approach than one might initially think, and I typically have the handle of the inserter somewhere around the patient's head. Because of the asymmetrical design of the eyelet, Application of tension on the sutures will seed it into the bone. Final tensioning of the tendon is done before screw insertion. Once the inserter handle is then removed, you can see the sutures guide you immediately down to the hole in the bone. Because it's over the horizon, you never have a direct visualization of this hole, and this guiding suture path is an extremely helpful tool for this technique. Final tensioning of the sutures to secure the tendon is done at this time. And once you are satisfied with the tension, then the screw is inserted flush with the bone. The handle is then removed, and the sutures are cut, completing the procedure. Thank you very much.